If it rains, the road outside your house is wet. If P is the statement, it rains, and Q is the statement, the road outside your house is wet, we can say that P implies Q. If P, then Q. Here, P is called the consequent and Q is called the antecedent. If P is true, so is Q. Affirming the consequent is the formal fallacy of thinking that the reverse must also be true. We affirm that P is true simply because it could be true. If the road outside your house is wet, it rains. No, not necessarily. Maybe it's spring and the snow is melting. Maybe your neighbor is washing his car. Maybe the fire department was just there putting out a fire. Or maybe it rained an hour ago. It's possible for the road to be wet even though it's not raining. This is valid. Premise 1. If P, then Q. Premise 2. P. Conclusion. Therefore Q. This is not. Premise 1. If P, then Q. Premise 2. Q. Conclusion. Therefore P. Look at it this way. Premise 1 means that there's no way P can be true if Q is false. Because if P is true, so is Q. Q being false tells us something about P. That it's also false. Q being true, however, says nothing about P. The road is wet. That means maybe it's raining, maybe it's not. Q may be true because P is true, or P may be false and Q is true for some reason unrelated to P. If you murdered Elvis Presley, then Elvis Presley is dead. Elvis is dead, so maybe you murdered him. Or maybe someone else did. Or maybe he died as a result of his unhealthy lifestyle. Or maybe the other aliens took him home and he lived happily on his home planet until he died of old age last Thursday. From the premises given here, we simply can't tell. This is one of the many problems with the arboreal argument for the existence of God. Of course God exists, just look at the trees! Setting all the other problems aside, the argument is invalid because it assumes that the existence of trees requires the existence of God just because God, if he exists, can create trees. But why can't invisible pixies, if they exist, also create trees? Or better yet, why can't trees be products of natural processes? Or something else I can't even think of? The argument assumes that since God creating trees implies that trees exist, or at least did at some point, trees existing must also imply that God created them. That's not true, that's affirming the consequent. Of course, Winston Wu has committed this fallacy in support of the claim that the scientific establishment refuses to acknowledge the paranormal for dogmatic reasons, he says, quote, If researchers come up with evidence for psychic phenomena, it's automatically dismissed as invalid simply because it challenges the orthodoxy of the scientific establishment, not because the experiments were not legit, unquote. This of course excludes the possibility that the supposed evidence is dismissed because it's garbage and doesn't hold up to even the slightest scrutiny. Conspiracy theorists love this fallacy because the lack of evidence supporting their various stories is consistent with that evidence being covered up. Yes, if the evidence is being covered up, it won't be available, but the fact that it's not available does not imply that it's being covered up. It could simply mean that the evidence doesn't exist, because the story is just plain wrong and there is no conspiracy at all. But good luck getting them to understand that. Until next time, stay logical.